What is going on YouTube? Welcome to TJ Mitchell Films, your one-stop shop for everything Jeep and off-road related content, where the motto on the channel here is build it, wheel it, and film it. So what we're talking about today is this bed rack that I made. I'm gonna explain it later in the video, uh, why I built it the way I did and stuff like that. I really take a lot of pride in the fact that I build a lot of my own stuff. I think it really separates me from some of the other channels out there. So if you appreciate that as well, make sure you go on there and subscribe. These are, these are some of the other things I've already built for the Gladiator that I didn't buy. Let me explain a couple things first off. Uh, this originally started as just these crossbars right here so I can mount this rack. Now I built this rack, this is steel. I built this for my Suzuki Samurai uh, several years ago. And I just kind of wanted to be able to repurpose it for now and it just sits on top of these crossbars uh, right here and is bolted on as you can see. And this gives me an upper level of storage. Uh, it sits right above the tailgate here. We open this up and we have full underneath um, storage. So uh, spare tire or totes, tools, whatever. Plus up here we can put, uh, we can put a lot of stuff up on the rack and we have um, you can see it's got tie down points all over it. So we can, anything we want, we can tie down here. Uh, pretty much probably don't have to tie anything down underneath. And then eventually I plan on getting a rooftop tent to go on the top. And it might be a little high. I might end up having to lower this down, um, but I put it higher up because I wanted, when this is empty, I wanted to have a little bit of visibility out of the back window here. And I also wanted to be able to actually have some room between the, the rack and the top um, to get things in here for storage. So it's kind of a dual purpose, uh, three tier system I have going on. Um, I think it looks great. I'm gonna keep it bare aluminum um, for now. And uh, later, later I'll probably have it powder coated, but for now I'm gonna shine it up a bit and it kind of matches those skull crusher inner fenders, leaving them aluminum. I kind of like the aluminum look. I am just, I'm really happy with uh, with how it turned out. And um, the only thing that it doesn't allow me to do is I can take off this rack um, pretty easily, but I'm still gonna have these crossbars in here. And that's not really a big deal to me. Um, it's not very hard to take off. So if I have to, um, I can take the whole entire uh, rack system off. You've been checking out some of the SEMA coverage. You've probably seen a lot of gladiators and you've probably seen a lot of bed racks. They're becoming really popular. Overlanding's becoming more popular, which is a good thing. The rack themselves are a great idea. However, if you go and look online, I think one of the cheapest ones I found was from JCR Off-Road. And I think it starts around $700. I don't think there's anything wrong with JCR's rack. I haven't ever seen it in person. First off, you have the price point. I wasn't really looking to spend $700 on a rack. I spent like, 80 bucks in material on this one. Um, also, those companies have to ship those racks, so they're all bolt together, which I'm sure is totally fine, but I like everything being welded together. Uh, just in my mind, it gives me more peace of mind and it's a little more sturdy, so, because um, I can't ship, it'd be very expensive to ship a rack that was welded together like this. Uh, the bolt together design allows them to ship them, totally makes sense, but I like my stuff beefy, normally overbuilt is the way I tend to build things. What I like about this design is it gives me a lot of different mounting options. I can, with this, uh, for my side mounting, uh, these are my two main rails. If I need to add, I can add in another piece of tube wherever I need to connect this to add, to mount anything I want. And it's gonna be really stout. So. In my mind, this was the way to go, uh, cheaper and stronger. And plus this is, this is aluminum, so this is really lightweight. What we're gonna be doing today is taking uh, our high lift jack and we're gonna be mounting it to this lower tube right here uh, on the driver's side. Um, just to get our first thing up there, uh, I'm not really sure what accessories I want on here yet. I don't really have anything else um, that I purchased yet. Um, obviously the rooftop tent will go up top eventually, uh, I still haven't decided on that either, but for now, we'll get the high lift up here. Because the first thing we're mounting is something heavy like this high lift, uh, we're definitely gonna try and keep it uh, as low as possible, um, just to keep the weight down low. We're gonna hang the foot uh, right off the front right here, 
and we're just gonna end up uh, drilling, I think, three holes uh, through this one by two tube. We're not really using any sort of special mount. Uh, we're just gonna drill straight through. Just use a couple nuts as spacers to space the high lift out and away from the tube just a little bit. I think three mounting points will keep it plenty secure when we're bouncing down the trail. So we're just gonna get the top of this, the main part of the high lift, flush with the top of the one by two tube. Take our Sharpie in here, mark our, mark our holes. Looks like all of our holes were spot on. We got the jack exactly where we want it. Just tighten this bad boy down. All right, so as you guys can see right here, this is the spacing. Uh, maybe later on we'll cut uh, like a little sleeve out of aluminum uh, just to put in here uh, as a spacer instead of these nuts. But um, for now, this should work good. And there it is, we got our high lift mounted. This thing is, man, I mean, it's super stout. Later on, um, might change these nuts to like um, wing nuts. Also, I wanted to point out with the design of the rack, uh, depending on the object like this high lift, um, I could easily just flip it and mount it on the inside and just flip the bolts around. There's plenty of room to mount it on the inside if you're worried about it like hanging out and getting caught um, on a trail. The way I built this is the uprights, everything is inside uh, the bed line as you can see here. So uh, odds are you're gonna smash up your bed before that anyways, but. I also had a thought that might look a little silly, but taking another piece of tube uh, coming out like this, and just sticking out just past the body up here just a little bit and bringing it back in. Um, so that way, if it sticks out like just a little bit past the body and you get off camber like against a tree or something, uh, that tube is gonna take the impact. Um, I'd really have to think about how we, how I put that on there and gusseted it because alum uh, the aluminum, a little more iffy, uh, might wanna crack. But I think it might hold up because if it's connected here with this tube, it's braced all the way to the other side of the bed, so it'll disperse, uh, you know, the impact of the load would be dispersed across a larger section. So it might work out. Something I'm thinking about. Thinking about. If anybody has uh, any suggestions for that, let me know in the comments down below. Lastly, I wanted to talk real quick about just kind of the summary of, of the whole rack. I started just with uh, the angle iron and the two inch 120 wall tubing. Um, running straight across. It bolts through with these um, brackets that I had tapped. Um, I gotta come back later and uh, trim this bottom part off. Doesn't need to hang down this far. But uh, yeah, these brackets behind here are just tapped. So it just uh, holds it to the side of the bed. And I built that first so I could have the rack, so I could have two levels of storage. And then after I was looking at it, um, I just got some uh, inch and a half, 120 wall, round tube, uh, did a couple calculations on how I, uh, my height that I wanted, cause I know it is tall, but I didn't want the space. So bent up that tube. And once I was looking at it, I thought, um, I was gonna do round tube to connect them, but uh, I th then the one by two, this is a one by two, 120 as well. And it just, I feel like it looks better. And plus it gives a really easy mounting surface. And like I said, at any point, I can just cut, uh, I can just cut little sections right here and I can weld in uh, more mounting points. So it gives me a lot of versatility and the aluminum keeps it really light. Uh, with the Gladiator, it's already heavy. So lighter is better. Uh, eventually I'm gonna be remaking this rack um, just cause this thing's heavy. It's, uh, I kind of built it overkill. I don't know why I built it so heavy, but we're gonna build this out of aluminum. Um, and maybe make it just a little bit wider. I'm not sure yet. I do like, so what is kind of cool about this setup is if you're on the side right here, you can reach in and grab something that's that's in here. 
Um, so I kind of like that instead of like kind of covering the whole thing. Gives you a little bit of access to, to reach in. Um, something for the future that I would really like to do, I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen like uh, those drawer systems. Uh, I think decked is a really popular one. There's just like plastic and metal and it's got like ball bearings and you just pull the whole thing out. Um, I'm kind of debating making my own version of that. Uh, I got a couple ideas floating in my head um, for, for two main drawers and then possibly uh, like little cubbies on the side. Not sure about that one yet though. Uh, got to think about the design and come up, uh, come up with something. I'm thinking about not using ball bearings for it and I'm thinking about using uh, plastic uh, UMHW uh, plastic for sliders essentially and probably making that out of aluminum as well. Maybe stainless steel actually. Still thinking about it. But that's what I do on this channel. I'm not just putting bolt-on products uh, on my Gladiator here. I, I build my own stuff. Having a Jeep is expensive. Uh, this is one of the most expensive hobbies you could pick and it's freaking expensive. So anytime I can save some money and make a product that I think looks really cool and also is functional, that, that's, that's the other thing. Uh, I try and, everything I try and do has more of a function than a, than a style. If you're, if you're this far in the video and you're not subscribed, make sure you go down there and hit that subscribe button because obviously you like the video. Uh, I got tons of ideas. Like coming into the winter, we're gonna be doing more builds. I'm, I'm thinking about doing a rear bumper. I don't know. I think I wanna do a high clearance rear bumper where I cut some of the body off. I don't know. We're getting there, piece by piece. Thanks so much for watching and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.